Hi everyone, it's Silent Bonds here from Stress Coach Training and Empaths and Sensitives. Now, today I wanted to talk about um, some of the challenges that many people face with anxiety disorders and panic attacks and why I never recommend that someone starts with a breathing technique and why even something like a traditional meditation technique where you're focusing on the breath is not always ideal for many types of clients. Now, you know, one of the realities in the holistic sector is that when people are taught many, you know, strategies, they assume that they're always the most safest and effective for certain types of clients, but everyone is individual and also there is sometimes common denominators which can happen with certain types of clients. Also, it's one of the things that I go on in my training school is that there can be things like contraindications and some, you know, we're all individual and when someone presents themselves to you, they can have not just the presenting issue, but there can be other things that's going on. And it's really important that we always look at the person holistically. We, we, even if we're not trained in many different disciplines, it's important still to have the awareness and to see things in a holistic way, right? Because often, you know, it can be... If you think about when someone comes to you and we're trying to often um, cut in, in relaxation therapy and stress management, we are trying to teach people how to be more empowered and take back their own life and how they manage and they reduce their stress and let go of stress and anxiety. And in relaxation therapy, it's very much the same, but we're really teaching people how to get these deep, deep states of relaxation and back to what we call the relaxation response, which is something that many people today struggle with because they don't even realise they are suffering from chronic anxiety or stress, even lower levels of, you know, chronic or long-term anxiety and stress. And in many ways, they don't know how to properly switch off. They need something else to relax, they need a device, they need to be distracted, they need a nap, you know, that kind of thing. So, everyone is individual, but there is quite a few common denominators that I saw very early on in my career that made me change how I approached my work and it tended to work um, not more, just more effectively in the short term, but in the long term. And the biggest one was about yes, using certain strategies before you got people to, um, you know, be, um, how could you say, doing breathing techniques or even focusing on the breath. Now, for example, I run meditation classes for many years. I had been studying meditation for about 10 years before, you know, I started teaching. And when I went out to teach, I only took taught a lot of meditation tools as stress management strategies until then I was more seen as a meditation teacher and what I would always try and ask because I was coming from an anxiety management and stress management perspective first was that I always tried to ask why the person was coming to the meditation class and what was going on because that can be quite insightful if someone had re recent trauma recent grief and were suffering anxiety and panic disorders, I would give them some strategies or recommend a few things before they actually came to the meditation class. And there's quite a few valid reasons why, there's many reasons why, but one of the, the main reasons just in relation to what I'm talking about today is that many people who suffer from anxiety disorders um, or have breathing difficulties maybe to do with a medical condition can actually become very obsessed about their breathing and around the lung and, and 
area and what happens is that becomes a stressor for them because they feel that that's where the problem is and when you have someone who is very fearful or obsessed about a certain area of the body from a holistic perspective you want to try and ground them and you want to and even you know from a spiritual perspective to get centered but also it's about balance right and i find that there is some clients that you are better not for example using a traditional breath meditation which is even just focusing on the breath and I always have to add you know something that's controlling the breath in many ways is not meditation because you're not being you're doing something and when you have a client that comes to you and is has been suffering at that point or in the past from anxiety disorders sometimes certain breathing strategies can trigger that you know back into the cycle if they're still in in the chronic anxiety and stress cycle so i recommend certain things at certain stages now i have to add the breath meditation is never about controlling the breath and it is about being a witness and detaching and it can help at a different stage you know and it's recommended at a different stage but when someone has had so much and it, it feels like trauma for them in relation to their breathing, it, it's not the most ideal technique. And I'm very much for not just about using the most quickest and fastest at that point to, to support them. I believe it's so important that we use strategies that in the long term the client is less likely to come back and need your help. Okay? So there is, I use a two-faceted approach. I think it's, it's, it's useful to give some strategies that the client feels relief from quite quickly. But you should never, never sell that or, um, how could you say, make that a priority over really getting to the root or really changing them back so that in the long term, long term, they don't need to come back, you know, because at the end of the day it's about doing a good job it's not about showmanship it's not about you know just about doing the quickest things okay from a marketing perspective sometimes we know that people today want everything instantly and sometimes there's some tools we'll we'll sell just to help them and that gets them in and it gets them then to try and move towards taking the power back and doing something themselves there's lots of issues we see with people because a lot of people do not take self-responsibility. In many ways, it's been... A lot of that is to do with conditioning and the way society evolved, has evolved. If I look at, for example, um, many people in the UK and, you know, and I'm in Scotland, many people are so used to giving their health over to a health practitioner rather than taking self-responsibility is that they want that quick fix they expect somebody to sort it for them and when you're helping someone with you know any sort of empowerment stress management anxiety management there is it's so important that you are using the tools in the right way in the safest and effective way and in the right order and yes sometimes i the way i teach my course in many ways the, the students are getting the units and in some ways, some aspects of it as if they were a client, so they're going through a journey. But I also make it in a way that it's flexible because each of my students will be working with a different audience. And they have to be able to be adaptable in certain situations and have enough tools that if they come across someone within their client audience that maybe has other issues, they have things to be able to be adaptive and still be able to support that client so anxiety disorders i never recommend that is why i never make breathing strategies the first protocol in any of the, the sessions or for the client case studies okay um my students know the other strategies that, that they use for a variety of reasons and it's just because of we are want to get them into the relaxation response in a way that doesn't um, get them into bad habits, right? So what we're trying to do is do some other things 
everyone has different methods, but in my training, I do it a certain way for, for a lot of reasons. Now, I've had quite a few students interested in the last year or so who've came to me and, you know, they've been quite relieved because they maybe went to practitioners and that's all they did. They did breathing techniques and for them it didn't work and it, it made it more stressful for them. And also, you know, you can get an, an odd student then who has the issue with, for example, doing the traditional meditation even though they're doing better and again it's because they've got that association with the breath um, and it is important when you're supporting people to make clarification between a breathing technique and meditation but the reminder about meditation and the traditional meditation the first one that I use in the training there is, a, there is there, you know, there's ways it can be adapted and you can still do a traditional meditation technique and it doesn't have to be focusing on the breath. But it's really important that you remember that um, no matter what, one of the things that I learned, and this is so, so important because I trained in so many things, so many schools said that, oh, this is safe for everyone. You can use this and it will help everyone. I've done so many courses and I discovered that lots of people did not fit in those boxes and, and it was not always. That's just sometimes, um, yes, the, the school may believe that, okay, the school may see that, but they may not see the things that their clients don't tell them or their students don't tell them or other circumstances where they've not worked in. Because one of the things you've got to understand is that, um, and this is a good thing to remember, Not people sometimes that are trainers have not always spent you know, tens years like out in the practice, they may have been mostly spent most of their work training, learning and teaching um, and, you know, and maybe have a short time so they maybe not have a wealth of experience in certain areas or it might be they're just lucky to not have experienced clients with certain issues. But I know personally that there's lots of things that happened to me that I didn't tell the therapists because I never went back, so they didn't know. They didn't know that certain things happened or that I went to things and people said, this will definitely do this or just, and maybe then I had other issues further on and realised why. But you don't really go back and tell the person, you know, you don't do that generally. You know, I would, if people asked me and wanted to know someone that was, someone I knew very well, and I would, you know, look, this happened, so it might be worth thinking about. But, you know, from a client perspective, your clients, most of you see, you don't always see the bigger picture. So it's really important to know. And also, I'll give you one example that always stuck out is a friend of mine um, was doing business coaching. I remember her asking a therapist, so, you know, you can see it does all these things, but what's your proof? And she said, well, nobody's ever come back. And there's a lot of therapists and healers and things assume that when someone doesn't come back, they've came not came back because they've done really well. And it's, I'll be honest, I mean, ninety nine percent of people I never went back to it wasn't it was nothing to do with the help that, that it improved me. If if I done really well and improved, I actually the first thing I would do was would, would go back to them or would get a message to them to say, by the way, that really helped me. And um, the people that never heard from me again often you didn't really help me. So, you know, I think we've got to sometimes remember, and I'm not saying that just because you don't hear from someone again that, that you didn't help them, but sometimes that's a naive perspective. And it, and any healer, we have to get out at ego, right? We have to go at ego. And even though we all want to do really well and we all want to be the best at what we do, right? And and that might not be from an ego perspective, and it just might be that you want to be the safest and you want to be the best in relation to doing what is the best for your client. And that's what it is, is what's best for your client. And you may want to do that, but that doesn't mean that in the learning curve, and as you go out to do work, that things are not always 100% or not 90%, because you are still in the learning phase. And that's reality. That is reality. And when we go out, we can mean well, we can do a lot for our clients, but that doesn't mean that there's not improvement or there's not things that we learn or find better ways for our type of clients, right? And it is, it's always about focusing on your audience, but also having the, the reality to know that even though you might pick a niche, which I believe is so important, 
and know your ideal audience that even within that niche, right? Is that everyone will have experiences within a niche that is out with your area's expertise or out with your level of, you know, of, of awareness or understanding because you've not experienced that because everyone is individual. So, you know, going back to the, the breathing perspective, I do have reasons. And there's a lot, you know, it's like a lot of things like even um, the the vagus nerve and all that. There's lots of exercises for the vagus nerve and all that, but, but really people, and some of that stuff, is a, a, it's amazing for many people and it can do a lot for lots of people. But again, some of these courses, a lot of people come back and if you, you speak to people are more, well, I'm not saying all medical, it depends what it is. There is some people come back and say, well, we've not really thought about this situation and that situation. So what we've got to do is always remember every client is an individual, right? And that's why it's important. And I always talk about making sure in these type of sessions that you get enough information. Because if you've not asked the right questions, you may be taking that client right down the road, a very long path and wasting their time, energy and money on something when actually you should have been addressing another issue first. Um, I learned the hard way that the the therapists who don't ask enough tend to make most more assumptions. And of course, you don't want to feel as if you're like a doctor and you're going through. But as I talk about each session, the more that you ask, the more that you you learn and you never ever assume. You never assume. Because if you assume too much, then you start going down a, a, a path, as I said, not the, the most effective or even safest path for that person. So that's just a wee reminder, okay? So bye for now. Have a lovely day.